My name is Reverend Ezekiel Grimm. When I say the end times are upon us, you will agree. It is the year 1879, and I can assure you that we will not see the 20th century. After nearly two decades, the American Civil War has finally ground to a halt. A tired war machine squatting on the ruined bodies of both blue and gray. Though freedom rings for all men and women, the country is still cleft in twain, and the red horse of war rides between the borders of these two nations, so in guerrilla raids and proxy war. Eleven years ago, the great quake shattered my own home of state of California, turning the west coast into a series of archipelagos. Crops wither and fail, and only through the tender machinations of the faithful here in the city of lost angels do we tip the scales of famine for one more year, at least for those of you who number amongst the faithful. In the wake of that disaster, a great pestilence sweeps through this country like the stroke of a scythe. In the ruins of California, a new mineral was discovered, ghost rock, which burns ten times hotter and one hundred times longer than coal. This new fuel has fanned the fires of science, but one only needs to look upon the choking smokestacks that strangle most of our cities to know this is a curse and not a blessing. Finally, you've all no doubt heard the tales of the dead becoming restless. Corpses refuse their graves, ghosts haunt dark places, and ghoulish entities glut themselves on the innumerable corpses left in the wake of war. Know that I have seen the end upon a pale horse, and soon, my followers, there will be a reckoning. That is an overview of the setting of Deadlands, a game of pulp horror set in the Weird West, an alternate history in which the American Wild West has been twisted by the supernatural into nightmare forms. This is the third incarnation of the Deadlands setting. The first one used its own unique rule set and systems, and the second was using the Savage Worlds set of rules. This third incarnation also uses Savage Worlds, so you need to buy this $10 uh, rule book separately. But instead of being in one book, like Deadlands Reloaded, it is in two, and it uses the Player's Guide, which we're discussing here. And then it also uses the Marshall's Handbook, which I will discuss in the next video. It is essentially the DM's Guide, a companion to the Player's Guide. Now, Deadlands is an amalgam setting. It is pulp westerns, spaghetti westerns. It is horror and steampunk all together. Now, while the supernatural has always existed in the setting of Deadlands, it has always been exceedingly rare, more so than even in the world of darkness. And up until a few hundred years before the setting begins, in 1878, the supernatural has all been, has all but disappeared. Now, recently, a ritual has been performed, a ritual that will remain secret for now, and it has ripped great gashes open in the veil that separates our world from the spirit realm. And the supernatural has come flooding in once again. Now, in America, this occurred during the Battle of Gettysburg, and soldiers on both sides began to rise up as undead and attack both blue and gray without care for what uniform they were wearing. Now, what should have been a decisive battle of the Civil War instead became a gruesome and bloody stalemate. And the Civil War itself ground on until 1878. Now, in 1868, another tumultuous event occurred. This is when the Great Quake shattered the coast of California and turned it into a series of islands an archipelago called the Great Maze. Now, in these islands and in the ruins of what was once California, a new substance, a new element has been found. It has been nicknamed Ghost Rock. It is a strange coal-like substance, but it burns ten times hotter and a hundred times longer than coal, and it has fueled an industrial revolution. Now, this is what gives the setting its Steam, its bizarre steampunk inventions. Of course, with this new science means new weapons, 
And in the Civil War, it became the testing ground for Tesla coils, which shot arcs of lightning and fried human beings. It uh, saw flamethrowers in trench warfare, and it saw the use of chemical weapons, even in the 1860s. Now amidst all this human perpetuated misery, dark things have begun to seep into the world. The stories of dead soldiers rising up was not believed at first. It was laughed off as superstition. But these tales, and worse, became more commonplace. Exsanguinated bodies have been found in the streets. Great serpents have been seen slithering through the great maze, large enough to devour entire ships. And great bipedal werewolves have been seen carrying off unsuspecting travelers. Now, the Texas Rangers and a shadowy U.S. government branch, simply called the Agency, has been dispatched to investigate the supernatural and to kill it, and to suppress any and all evidence of these strange happenings. The Agency is my personal favorite. It's sort of this proto-FBI, Wild West X-Files thing going on, and I really like it. Now, that's an overview of the Deadlands setting, insofar as the characters will know it. There are plenty more secrets that are available in the Marshall's Handbook, but that's for the GMs. This is the Player's Guide. And within the Player's Guide, there's also an excellent section about Western life that will answer some of the questions you have about living way back then. Now, it gives you information on uh, what certain goods and services will cost, it gives you information on how travel is done, how most communications are performed, be they telegraph or the Pony Express, and how fast uh, that messages can be sent in the Wild West. It gives you um, information on how armies are structured, both for the Union and Confederate armies. It gives you uh, information on how the law works and who has jurisdiction where, as well as what the penalties are for most crimes in the West. Here's a little hint. Most of the punishments end with, hang him! Now, uh, it also helps to answer a lot of the questions you may have about the Wild West, and it helps you get into the mindset and gives you the information about playing in this setting. Now, for character creation, it's standard Savage Worlds rules. There's a few new edges and hindrances in here, which would be uh, the merits and flaws or the feats of any other game system. Uh, most are setting-specific, things that you would find in the Wild West, like uh, pistol duelists and card sharps who are experts at gambling, things like that. Although some of them are universal, and this being Savage Worlds, you could use them in any other setting using the Savage Worlds rule set. Now, my favorite particular edge in here is called Veteran of the Weird West, and it gives you an extra 20 EXP at character creation, which is a tiny sum considering that you're supposed to average two EXP per gaming session. But the cost is that you draw a card from the deck, and this corresponds to a secret chart in the Marshal's Handbook. And this represents a terrible tragedy that has befallen your character in their rise to greatness. Perhaps some snarling beast has bitten your arm off, or perhaps your character has seen such horrors and such violence that she has been driven to booze or to opium in order to forget. Or perhaps you've gained some madness in your travels and you're not quite right in the head. Or maybe your soul has been tainted as you fight against the darkness and now the beneficial spells of the blessed and the shamans wash right off of you with no effect. Some of these penalties are indeed secret and your character might not know what their flaw is before it's too late. Now, this being the, the wild and weird west, this setting is so rich and it is so rife with character creation possibilities. Will you perhaps play as an eagle-eyed Apache scout traveling through the deserts? Will you play as a sheriff or an outlaw or perhaps a bounty hunter who is somewhere in between or perhaps an investigator of some type or maybe a spy for the railway companies who are warring in the West. Perhaps you will play as a Navajo diplomat traveling from tribe to tribe, or perhaps as a sun-baked, uh, addle-brained old prospector looking for gold in the Nahills. You can, uh, there's just so many options 
and you can play just about anything you can think of. And this is before we even take a look at the characters with the supernatural background. Let's take a look at them right now. Now, the blessed are those who can call upon a higher power. Be they a preacher man, the son of a preacher man, a rabbi, an imam, a Buddhist monk, or a hongin or mambo of the Vodun faith. Now, for all other supernatural characters, they draw upon a pool of power points with which to cast their spells. It's like a, a mana mechanic that you would see in another game. This is not so for the blessed. They can make as many prayers as they want. And from the very beginning, they have access to all spells that are in the purview of a blessed character. But they will need to be able to call upon these prayers at, at any time because uh, in order to uh, cause them to work, they must make a particularly difficult role of their faith skill. And the more powerful the, the uh, spell or the prayer that they are trying to do, the more difficult the role. And so it is always, uh, their abilities are always available to them, but it is very difficult to make them work. And I feel that this is a very appropriate mechanic for a horror game. And then the so-called hucksters are the arcane casters of dead lands. After magic began to seep into the world, it was discovered that Hoyle, the creator of many card games, had secretly encoded strange mathematics into his card games. Mathematics that will unravel the very laws of reality if performed correctly. It's very similar to Kezia Mason from the Cthulhu mythos and her uh, particular brand of magic. Now, card slinging hucksters have discovered how to cast spells, and they disguise this by taking on the roles of rambling gamblers as they go about the western lands and ply their trade and learn and research new magic and spells, and they risk their very souls. Because you see, the hucksters have a special mechanic uh, for themselves. When they are low on power points and they are uh, unable to cast a spell that they wish, they can make what is called a deal with the devil. And in this, they, uh, depending on the character's skill, they are given a certain amount of cards. And they try and make the best poker hand that they possibly can. The better the poker hand, the more power points that you get for your spell, and uh, possibly the better that the spell functions. Uh, it may get increased duration, maybe increased damage. Um, it could even, uh, you could even cast an armor spell that lasts for a few days. Now, on the flip side of this, a poor poker hand may cause them to suffer what is known as backlash. And perhaps they will be shocked by magical energy as it courses through them and damages their nervous system. Perhaps they'll be driven insane for a few days. Perhaps they will lose their magical ability for a day or even a week. And perhaps they will be even possessed by an evil spirit when they are dabbling with magic. But you know the risks, partner. Besides, you're a gambler for a reason, right? And then we have the shamans, Native Americans who have a link to the spirit world. They eschew technology and they honor the old ways. Now, you can choose how much uh, technology that your character finds disgusting and will not abide by. Now, the more technology that you stay away from, the more you have a link to the natural world, the more of the spiritual font of energy and power you will have access to. Now, shaman characters stand at the center of the mythos of Deadlands because the current horrors that the spirit world is belching forth into our world has also allowed some beneficial spirits to step forth. And it is shamans who are the ambassadors to these beneficial spirits. It is the, the future of America and of humanity itself will be decided by those who best know and best honor the past. Now, speaking of the future and belching forth horrors, the mad scientists are the, super, are the next supernatural characters. Now, instead of spells, they create wild steampunk devices. They have inventions, tonics, and machinery to do their bidding. Now, the effects of some of these things will seem quite magical at first, but it is science, I assure you. 
They will use Tesla coils to fry their foes from a distance. They will use electromagnetic belts to provide a force field and keep bullets out of their flesh. They will make uh, syringes filled with mysterious tonics that when injected will heal wounds before your very eyes. But just how do these infernal devices actually work? When taken apart, they seem to defy all the laws of science. How they work is a mystery. And where the devil do these ideas come from to create such inventions? They seem to flow unbidden into the minds of these mad scientists. Perhaps it's no wonder that they seem to go more and more insane with each and every invention that they create. Such is the price of genius, I suppose. Now, all these scientific wonders are uh, available because of the discovery of ghost rock. Now, the ignorant claim that this element was placed into the earth by devils so that mankind would war and kill each other to possess it. Now, of course, the, uh, the murder rate has gone uh, up, and there are many proxy wars that are being fought all over the weird west, but that is not a conspiracy. That is just modern progress for you. The final type of supernatural character is the martial artist. And it is not only arcane energies and divine provenance and primal spirits and weird science that has returned to the land. It is also that of the power of chi. Yes, the internal energies that have allowed people to focus them inward and be able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. The ability to punch through walls and the ability to run almost alongside a steam train. Yes, it is these secrets that have been given to martial artists and to David Carradine. And these characters are those that you would find in a, in a Wu Jia film or the monk characters from another uh, fantasy setting. They have been brought into the Weird West, a taste of the East in the West. And uh, the this is from uh, mostly Chinese immigrants who have come to work on the rail railroads. And the cities of uh, Deadwood and San Francisco have very large Chinatowns and very large influence of this culture. Uh, no more so in San Francisco because the Chinatown there has bloomed into a city in its own right. And it is called Shan Fan. And colorful Chinese sampans and junks, their ships, ply the, uh, the waves in the Great Maze. And they look for treasures, both in the form of ghost rock mining, as they find that, and also in the form of looted plunder, as pirates war with each other and unleash their chi powers against each other while on the great waves. And so, those are your supernatural characters. And uh, as far as the powers go, each type of arcane background as it's called, has its own spell list, its own powers that it can choose from. For example, the huckster, the arcane caster, is very much what you would consider a wizard from a uh, fantasy setting. The blessed, unsurprisingly, and the shamans are what you would consider to be the clerics and the druids, if you're to use a uh, fantasy game uh, trope to uh, explain them. Now, some of them have their own unique powers. For example, only the shamans can go on a spirit journey as they meditate and they can go into the spirit realm and uh, find spirits and try and find answers uh, to the quests that are before them. Now, uh, since this is the Savage Worlds uh, rule set, the powers are, in fact, uh, unique to the different arcane backgrounds, but they're also... Uh, broader. For example, the fear power. Each of the arcane types uh, has access to this, but they all use it in a different way. For example, blessed characters normally do not get the fear power. However, uh, Hongans and Mambos of the uh, Vodun faith will be able to use the fear power, and they will be a bit different. They will perhaps take a uh, candle and wave it and they will petition Baron Somdi to reveal the dancing dead so they may frighten their foes with a, with a fear spell. Uh, on the flip side, the shamans will instead uh, petition that of the spirit coyote, that wily trickster, and they will ask spirit coyote to send a keening howl through, uh, through the spirit realm 
in which to frighten their fellows and send them running and keep the shaman safe. Now, the, uh, the martial artists, in fact, do not have access to the fear power because most of their abilities are internal uh, rather than uh, casting spells on someone else. Now, the, uh, the mad scientists have access to most of the powers because you can rationalize just about anything with a strange invention. For example, a mad scientist casting the fear spell is actually using, uh, he's going to don a gas mask and he's going to use some fear gas and spray that in the face of some bandits and cause them to go running into the night. And so there is an overview of the player's handbook for the Deadlands setting, a game of pulp horror, pulp action, and mysteries in the weird and wild west.